Let's bring in Jim Lang. Jim Lang Sports. Jimbo, thanks for sitting through this. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, Rod. How are you? Good. You look fantastic, by the way. What time do you get up to do those early morning shifts? 4 (laughs) a.m. Have you had your nap yet? No, I'll probably, uh, probably about a half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, my old dog, Hershey, uh, who's getting close to 14 and I, we go for an afternoon nap and then have a coffee and hit it for round two later on this afternoon. Okay, Jimbo, good for you. So I got to ask you this. Is there a groundswell in Toronto of wanting to trade Kyle Lowry? Because I understand I'm not as big into baseball culture, basketball culture, but I know they're not talking about trading Sidney Crosby in Pittsburgh at all. He's off limits. Unthinkable, said Brian Burke on this show. I would think trading Kyle Lowry is unthinkable unless I'm missing something. I I don't know if it's unthinkable, Rod. Norm Powell is easier to digest if you're Messiah Jury in the Raptors front office. There are a lot of people that would like to acquire Norm Powell at the deadline. He can play small forward and shooting guard and you not disrupting the the balance and the chemistry and the leadership of the locker room by trading Norm Powell and you keep Kyle Lowry and you have a chance to reload for next year. This is becoming a lost season. Uh, the COVID outbreak that hit a bunch of the players in the team, Nick Nurse talked about it last night, that they simply run out of gas in the fourth quarter. Uh, Fred Van Vliet said it like the first day he had it, it felt like he had just played three straight games. They're still physically recovering and they're going up against good teams and and coming up Wednesday, they got to play the Denver Nuggets and, you know, Canada's Jamal Murray and, and it's a loaded basketball team and the schedule is brutal the rest of the way. And so Nick Nurse is trying to juggle his lineup the best he can with players who still, his key players, are still not 100%. But Norm Powell, if, if I'm a betting man, I would go to Proline and say Norm Powell is going to be traded and Kyle Lowry will not be traded because they're going to try to keep Kyle next year and see by getting rid of Norm, seeing what they get, reloading, and having an offseason, is this team really what we're seeing now in the losing streak or what they can be when people are healthy and playing like they should? Sure, Jim. But you know, Clark was just saying all the free agents that they lost. Kawhi Leonard, of course, Marcus Saul, like they, <laughs> Serge Ibaka. They're not the same team. And it's just this Twitter furor no. out there. I just think that this, they were treading water and in a playoff spot before the COVID outbreak. So now they've lost nine in a row. Why are people calling for firings? They just, again, what am I missing? You know, these are people, this is overreaction sports broadcasting and sports fandom now, Rod, that your team loses two or three in a row and they want to see people fired and people traded. There's some great teams, some championship teams have had losing streaks and slumps in the season and have come back, if not that year, the next year or the year after. Let's for, Tampa Bay Lightning got swept in the first round. The next year they win the Stanley Cup. They didn't fire everybody and get rid of everybody. Nick Nurse has a ring on his finger, an NBA championship ring. You can't take that away from him. And they could use a really good big man. And maybe by trading Norm Powell and doing some things in the offseason, they can get something to complement the rest of the team. Because they do like to play small ball. Sorry, I just knocked my phone. They do like to play small (laughs) ball. But against some of the teams in the NBA, playing small ball is not easy. Because you're just going to get beat up. And if you ask me, the Raptors need some big size in the front court to help complement the rest of their talent. They still have a lot of good players. This is not a team... This is not like what we're seeing with Detroit and some of these other teams and um, who are just awful right now. I think the Raptors are just in a bad way recovering from COVID, and it's just a year that's gotten away from them. Uh, by the way, from New Era Sins podcast, Dave's watching. He says, Pascal Siakam fined 50000 over his heated exchange with Nick Nurse. What a joke. I just wanted to slip that in there. But, Jim, listen, man, I see you in a tremendous place. You are Canada's foremost NFL expert. I think I hung you with that moniker. You're welcome. And now the even bigger richest league on the planet. Um, so when you talk about pressure and fandom and media, you know what goes with money? Pressure. I'm looking at Dak, scheduled to make $70 million with America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. He's not getting Gosh. any breaks anymore, right? Like, your thoughts on the TV deal and what it means for the National Football League? Well, the TV deal first, Rod, and what it means is that at $300 million a year, you have COVID insurance for the next decade. If they don't have fans in the stadium, 
because of whatever may happen from the health authority, the National Football League doesn't care. The, the cap is going down a little bit this year because of COVID. But now they signed the new deal. So now they went down from a 195 to 185. They could go up to 225 or 240 next year and have more than enough money to pay all the coaches and all the staff without having one fan in the stadium at $300 million a year. And there's no other sports league, the sports franchises, sports entity in the planet that will make that much money in TV to play all, pay all their players and all their staff and all their coaches and not sell a ticket in the stadium. And as things get, people get more vaccinated, the USA is on a tremendous pace to have everyone vaccinated by Memorial Day at the end of May. Um, I don't see why they won't have fans in the stadium in fall and back to merchandising and back to the money-making machine that it is. So as big as the NFL was before when it comes to financial statements and with $300 million in TV money and then fans coming back for next season, I mean, it's a bulletproof league for the next decade thanks to the TV deal. Why can't every league do that? Or even on a mini scale, the NHL, CFL? You know, what, 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 what's the NFL got going for it? It's heritage. It's star power. The, as far as I'm concerned, the NFL has done a great job through the years, through, I remember, Dan Marino and Joe Montana that evolved into Peyton Manning and Tom Brady that evolved to Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. And when I was younger, it was a running backs league with Walter Payton and John Riggins and Earl Campbell to a quarterbacks league to, I mean, Andy Reid is a household name as a coach in the NFL. I mean, that's that's part of the difference with the National Football League. There are some, John Cooper is known in the hockey circle. He's not a household name in, in, or outside of the hockey circle, but Andy Reid is. And th that's part of the difference with the National Football League is, is Bruce Arians is now well-known around fans around North America. It's the ability to be bigger than just what's on the field. Uh, State Farm commercials with Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes now. It's it's reality shows and players and dancing with the stars. I mean, that's one thing I've always thought the NHL should, should have a whole department and all they do is sell the players and sell the league better. We If hardcore hockey fans know about certain players and coaches and their story, but a lot of mainstream people in North America now do not know that. The NBA, that's the reason the NBA is they are a star league. Steph Curry and LeBron and Kyle Lowry and every team has got their big star and it's marketed as such. And and that's where the NFL is, is so very good. And even bad teams have good players and, and recognizable players. I can see merchandise uh, from just about every NFL team in the league walking around the street in Canada at any time even from players you wouldn't think of because of what they do. It's it's the truth. By the way, from our viewers, Bill and Assiniboia. Wow, didn't know all that about the NFL. From Wayne in Victoria, B.C. It's absolutely amazing how much money is in the NFL. Jim is a fountain of information on the NFL. He's great. I think we got four <laughs> minutes, Jim, and I got two questions for you. Pat in Saskatoon wants to know if the New England Patriots have won free agency. Oh, oh yes, they have. I, I did not think Bill Belichick would be um, that loose with the money of Robert Kraft. I've never seen him spend like that before. Historically, the New England Patriots were always the team that would get the value free agents in the offseason. They would get uh, Larry Izzo, who was a backup linebacker and special team players for $950,000 at two years and helps him win a Super Bowl. And we're going, look at Bill Belichick. He's managing the salary cap and building the pieces around him by not spending money. And he goes out and just, he's throwing cash at players. I mean, it's like, it's just reminding me of what my soon-to-be eight-year-old daughter goes to the mall and finds out she has my credit card at Upper Canada Mall. And I'm like, what's all this stuff? Coming with bags of stuff? And they obviously wanted to load up a tight end and all these different positions. And Bill Belichick and the Patriots did it. And I didn't think he would do it, but uh, I... I mean, around the AFC, I have to think Bill Belichick is not ready to go quietly into that good night, and especially after spending that kind of money and the and on, and and not just spending it like without thinking. He targeted certain positions in certain segments of his team and spent money to really increase their the depth of talent and 
and the way they're structured. So maybe players he thought would fit in as an A or B, he could put it as a C. He can groom them more. I mean, he's not just thinking this year. I think he's thinking the next few years. Bill Belichick didn't obviously like what happened last year, and he wasn't about to let it happen again. I was completely blown away at what he did in the offseason when it came to free agency. Ryan McCarthy from the No Credentials Required podcast in Albany, New York, says, question for Jim, will the ESPN do the same with the NHL where more hockey players, especially Americans, will become household names in the States? It has to happen. It has to happen for the NHL. This is where teams and, and general managers and media relations director and Gary Bettman and Bill Daly have to go to the players with the Players Association and say, look, gentlemen, for the betterment of the league, for the betterment of you, if you want to make commercial money and money off the ice and you want to be a household name and be a LeBron or be a Patrick Mahomes, then you have to help us. And you have to do commercials with ESPN. How about this? You're going to be mic'd up. And yeah, you may swear. Don't worry about it. But like NFL Films was so brilliant at micing players up. And then a couple days after a playoff game or a Super Bowl, you would hear them call the play. It's, I mean, I can't get enough of it as a fan. I would like to hear what the goalie's saying to a D-man when Ovechkin's coming down. And is he telling him, take him outside, funnel him? to the slot, stuff like that. You can't tell me a fan doesn't want that. So this is where the teams have to take a lot of the restrictions off that maybe they would have before and say, look, we're going to do this, and it's it's for the good of the league and the good of ESPN because the more money ESPN makes, the more money the league makes, the more money you make as a player on the ice in your contract and off the ice with potential commercial revenue. Yeah, I got to say this, by the way. I watch ESPN every morning, and they've brought back the NHL commercials, and there's a hilarious one. You probably saw it where the office guy catches Ovechkin in the filing room, and the guy looks at him, and he's in his <laughs> yeah. hockey equipment, and he's like, oh, I, it's like you're a Russian spy or something. And Ovi's like, da, the Rossi Shabu, yet. And the guy, the guy walks out, and Varlamov's hiding in the tile of the ceiling. And they're, oh, it's hilarious. So ESPN. That, that's they, the kind of thing I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, they've started bringing those ads back, and I expect there will be more. It's hilarious. And Jim, lastly, to finish up, being the CFL lover they are, Argo lover, notwithstanding, XFL, <laughs> CFL. What do you think? I think that the CFL has to think long and hard about this for the future of the league. It's the rock we're talking about. And I mean, he's got 15 million followers on Twitter, 20 some million on Instagram. And you're thinking, what does that matter? That matters because he is the, arguably the one or one a most recognizable name in Hollywood around the world. And you talk about selling star power to have the rock at a writer's stamps game at Mosaic Stadium, uh, talking about the CFL XFL, that that is headlines beyond Sportsnet and TSN and the local Regina Leader Post. That's headlines on Entertainment Tonight and People. Think about that. There would be an E, e uh, you know, the Entertainment Channel do a story at the Rock at Mosaic Stadium talking about a CFL XFL. You are broadening the scope of potential fans for the league. Randy Ambrosi is a nice bunch of guys and has a great football resume. He is not The Rock. And he's not making four and five hundred million dollars a movie and is a global name. The Rock is a global name. Why not tap into that? If you have to tweak some things to make it work, make it work. Once upon a time, the NFL would not do anything but the NFL. And the AFL came along with Joe Namath and, and Hank Stram and the Kansas City Chiefs and some different rules and different ways of doing things. And the NFL said, instead of beating them, let's join them. And they merged. And that's why they have $300 million a team now and a TV deal. It just may be the best thing that happened to the Canadian Football League. So really look at it. This I, I think we have to look at it with open eyes. I love Bob Irving to death. He's a Hall of Fame broadcaster in person. But let's let's look at this. And maybe it could be good for the league not just this year, but for years to come. Thank you. And I feel like we could go on for hours. <laughs> You've obviously thought about this. <laughs> Viewer Phil says when John Candy was at games, it was exciting. There's this celebrity schutzpah that I don't think the CFL understands because they haven't attached themselves to any in, for 30 years since John Candy. Jim, you were living there. Yeah. Weren't they getting 52000 at Skydome for a regular season game for the Argos? 
Yes, and that John Candy would be at different entrance gates at, at well, then Skydome or Rogers Center shaking hands. I remember my buddy said, Jim, you're not going to believe this. John Candy shook my head and said, thank you for coming. He still talks about that to this day, that John yeah. Candy shook his hand. And, and it was like a, a, an Argos-Lions game. He goes, I couldn't believe it. And, I mean, John Candy is still near and dear to hearts all around the world, but especially here in Canada. And you're right. I mean, that great cup with John Candy in Winnipeg against the Stampeders and so cold. I mean, people still get teary-eyed thinking about it, just the, the magnitude of it and the star power. No doubt. Jim, it's been far too long, but man, did we cover a lot of ground. Relish that role as the NFL insider because you're going to be a very hot <laughs> commodity across this country. Stay well, my friend. Thanks. Good to see you. Loving it. All right. The great Jim Lang joining us. You can follow him on Twitter at Jim Lang Sports. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.